السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على من أرسل الله رحمة وهداية ونور للعالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا دائما متصلا إلى يوم الدين All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the world, and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last and the seal of all the prophets and messengers and the master of all mankind. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family, companions, and upon whoever followed his footsteps to the day of judgment. Respected brothers and sisters, welcome back to today's lesson on the tafsir of Surah Maryam alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, today we're going to highlight verses 41 and 42, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ لِمَ تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّ كان صديقا نبيا إذ قال لأبيه يا أبت لما تعبد ما لا يسمع ولا يبصر ولا يغني عنك شيئا Yesterday we highlighted the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إنا نحن نرث الأرض ومن عليها وإلينا يرجعون and we said that this verse clearly indicates the all power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully able to do anything he wants in this universe because he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all the creatures and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all living all the creatures huh, would die Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will stay forever subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the creator of everything in that universe that's why one of his most beautiful names is Al Hayyu. Al Hayyu. The All Living Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. After mentioning, after mentioning the story of Prophet Zakaria and the Prophet Yahya, and after mentioning the Prophet of Lady Maryam alayhi salam, and a story of the speaking of Prophet Jesus Christ Isa alayhi salam in the cradle with the children of Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves to another new story in Surah Maryam, which is the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا Mention of Prophet Muhammad in the book, the story of Prophet Ibrahim, for he was a man of truth and a prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, in this verse is addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is speaking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wadhkur means mention all Prophet Muhammad. Mention all Prophet Muhammad. Fil kitab. The word al-kitab means the book. But what is the book in that context? Excellent, the Quran. So, if you go back to the very beginning of the surah, we have two books mentioned in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yahya khudil kitaba biquwa. And Jesus Christ says, Wa atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiya. So, brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Yahya, we said that. Ya Yahya khudi al-kitab bi-quwa What is a kitab? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet Yahya to behold very strongly Excellent, a Torah And when Jesus Christ alayhi salam said Wa atani al-kitab Qala inni abdullahi atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya What is the book of Jesus Christ? Injil And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam to mention in the book, which is the Quran. Mention in the book, the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is a sign of the miraculous nature of the Quran. This is a sign of the miraculous ijaz of the Quran, inimitability of the Quran. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was a little. 
before his ba'tha, before being assigned as a prophet, he وسلم, huh, didn't read and he وسلم, didn't try. He وسلم, was not an educated person, he وسلم, was unlettered. So the question right now, who told him of the story of Prophet Yahya? Who told him of the story of Prophet Isa? Who told him about the story of Prophet Ibrahim? This means that there is a supreme power who must have told him and educated him about those stories. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ibrahim. Ibrahim is Prophet Abraham, and they say, Abraham, he is Prophet Ibrahim. And Ibrahim is the father of all the prophets and messengers of God. Ibrahim is the father of all the prophets and messengers of God. In Arabic we say Abu al-Anbiya. He is Abu al-Anbiya. But the question right now, why is Ibrahim father of all the prophets and messengers of God? Why is Ibrahim the father of all the prophets and messengers of God. Anybody knows? Not the first. The first one is Adam. Adam is the first prophet. Huh? Right, Sultan? And man, we said that. We said that Adam is the first prophet. Right? Okay. So the question right now, why is Ibrahim the father of all the prophets and messengers of God? Because his child and his grandchild and the was the yeah, like that. Ibrahim, brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam, hmm, has two sons. Ismail, he is the eldest. Ismail and Ishaq. Prophet Ishaq. From Prophet Ishaq, all the children, all the prophets of Bani Israel. All the prophets of Bani Israel. And from Prophet Ismail, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's why he is called father of prophets. Father of prophets. Sarah, his wife, hmm, stayed for a very long period of time, didn't give birth to children. Huh? That's why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Ibrahim to get married to Hajar. Hajar is the mother of Ismail. Hajar is the mother of Ismail. When Hajar gave birth to Ismail, at that, at that time, Sarah became pregnant with Ishaq. Became pregnant with Ishaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ So Ishaq is a prophet. Yaqub is a prophet. Prophet Joseph Yusuf السلام, is a prophet. And so on and so forth until it comes to Jesus Christ. السلام. So Jesus Christ or Isa is the last is the last prophet from the children of Bani Israel from the progeny of Ishaq. Ismail السلام, according to the majority of scholars, Prophet Muhammad is the only Arab prophet come from him, come from him, Allah's peace and blessings be among them all. That's why Ibrahim was called father of all the prophets and messengers of God. Brothers and sisters, Ibrahim السلام, has another important title. What is that? <laughs> Not, yeah. The son of Not that. Yeah, Khalil al-Rahman. He is Khalil al-Rahman. Ibrahim is Khalil al-Rahman. The close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what will fill kitab Ibrahim? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّيقًا صَدِّيقًا This word, صَدِّيقًا Meaning that he was a man who used to speak the truth. He was a man who used to speak the truth. And we're going to know why. Inshallah, Rabbi He was a prophet. He was a prophet. If you still remember the question offered to me on the difference between prophets and messengers. Ibrahim, 
Ibrahim alayhi salam huh, is one of the senior messengers. We call them Ulul Azmi. We call them Ulul Al Azmi Min Al Rusul. We have five senior pro messengers of God. Who are they? Who are the five greatest messengers of God? Yeah, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, excellent Prophet Sufyan and Isa alayhi salam. There is still a missing one. He said Isa. Musa. Musa alayhi salam. So these are the five greatest messengers. These are the five greatest messengers. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Those are all the azmi min al rusul. فَصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرْ أُبُلْ عَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُولِ So Ibrahim alayhi salam was a prophet. So the meaning of the prophet once again, a man to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a divine message and he is also ordered to deliver the message. He is ordered to deliver, ordered to deliver the message. Not for somebody to say that a prophet is not ordered to, to, to deliver the message. So what is the point of, of his prophethood? What is the point of his nubu? So a prophet also is ordered to deliver the message as we said before. Okay. إذ قال لأبيه يا أبتي إذ قال Remember Prophet Muhammad when Ibrahim said to his father يا أبتي يا أبتي In Arabic language يا أبتي means Oh my father Oh my My father In Arabic language this style indicates some sort of respect Some sort of respect and this is the same way Yusuf alayhi salam when explaining his story he said to his father Yaqub Ya abati inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkab Ya abati inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkab Muslim scholars said that he raised a very important point which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would order Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make da'wah he subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana ادعو إلى ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة. When you see someone who is doing bad, who is doing evil, don't go to like him say, do so, do so. No, no, not like that. Deal with them with wisdom and good admonition. فرعون, Pharaoh, who said, I am your supreme lord. Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he سبحانه وتعالى sent Moses and Aaron to him, Musa and Harun to him, Allah سبحانه وتعالى ordered them. To say, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنًا Speak to him with a lenient speech, with a, a, a easy speech. لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى So, a da'iyah, a da'iyah would be a wise person, a very wise person, in case he deals with people very kindly, very justly, and in a wise way. In a wise way. Don't make people get away from you. Don't make people keep away from you. No. Make people get get close to you, and that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Wala kunta ghalid al qalbi an fadlu min hawli." Had had you had you uh, had uh, uh, a harsh heart, your companions would have kept away from you, but your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is is merciful, and your Prophet Muhammad is compassionate to the believers. Bil mu'minin ra'ufun rahim. إذ قال لأبيه يا أبتي لما تعبد ما لا يسمع ولا يبصر ولا يغني عنك شيئا. The people and the nation of Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام used to worship idols. Used to worship idols. أصنام. So Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام saw his father. He was afraid for his father. Oh, oh my dad, oh my father, why did you worship those idols? They did not hear. They don't uh, uh, see. They cannot avail you or benefit you in anything. So, why do you worship them? And he alayhi salam starts or engaged in a dialogue with his father. In a way to make him refrain from worshipping idols and offering his own acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. And inshallah, tomorrow we are going to highlight that in more detail. But brothers and sisters, here is a very important lesson for us as Muslims. What is that lesson? When a Muslim, male or female, 
sees something bad or evil, how should he act towards it? Not right away. Take my it. point is that, Brother Shiva, my point is that. So deal with wisdom. Deal with it with wisdom. Yeah, but not that also. You when you see something bad, someone com someone committing a mistake or a sin before you, okay? Or some evils committing for you. You think that you should remain silent like that, or you should you huh? You should hate it in your heart if you can do anything. This is the last one. This is the last you step. You should try to change the person. Yeah, that's it. Changing evil. This is the lesson. Changing the evil. When you see something bad or evil, as a Muslim, you must change that evil. You must change that evil. Okay? We have three stages of changing evil. According to the hadith of the Prophet Number one, if you have the ability, if you have the authority to change it with your hand, meaning with power, do that. Do that. If not, use your tongue. Say to him, oh, brother, that's haram. This is not God. This is against the sunnah of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do so, so with you. Just to try to make him keep away from the evil of the, or the harm he is doing. And the last stage, in case you don't have the authority, or in case you don't... Uh, you are unable to do that with your tongue, just uh, in, change it with your heart. Change it with your heart. And changing the evil or the munkar with your heart means that you hate it. You hate that munkar, but you have no power or no authority at all to change it with your tongue, with your uh, 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 power or authority. That's why, and that's actually what Prophet Ibrahim السلام, did with his father. But when he saw his father worshipping the idols, he said to him, Ya Abati, why do you worship those idols? They don't hear you, they don't see you, they cannot avail you or benefit you in any way. So Alayhi started to change the evil with his tongue. With his tongue. And inshallah tomorrow we are going to know that Ibrahim Alayhi moved to a higher level and he Alayhi Salaam changed the evil with his hands. With his hands. So that's for this lesson, inshallah, Rabbi Alameen. I will be happy to receive your questions if you have. So when you say to yes. change the evil of his tongue, what do you mean? Like make a dua? Or... You, I, I, for example, see brother Adam committing a mistake, for example. Uh, smoking cigarettes, uh -huh. they didn't come to the masjid. This is munkar. This is haram. So I'm going to speak with him with wisdom. That's, that's wrong. That's against the sunnah of the Prophet so You should do so and so and so. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will be pleased with you. So this is the changing of the monk of Munkar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions? Because last uh, last couple of years ago, we have a brother who come here. When he come, he pray, he have a little rock, like a rock. It's a rock. Little round rock. He pray, when he pray, he this is another point. Yeah. This is another point. This is another sect of Muslim. Okay. Called Shia, yeah. 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 So good, Haman. Is Ibrahim and Muhammad the most mentioned in the Quran? The most mentioned in the Quran? Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, no. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one who is most mentioned in the Quran is Prophet Musa. Musa is the, the one who is most mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. Well, you didn't get my question. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't ask you the question yet. My question is, mm -hmm. so their brother, should we tell him, no, you shouldn't do this? Or... Okay. Yeah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.